Hi there, my name is Peter Janis, and today I want to talk to you about the Radial J48 Direct Box. J48 is an active DI box that requires phantom power to make it work. Uh, phantom power comes from the mixing console up the XLR con connector and cable um, in a DC form. So it's 48 volts DC. It comes into this jack, the XLR jack, and then it powers the preamplifier inside the DI box. This is important to note. A lot of people don't realize that phantom power DI boxes, or any active DI box for that matter, is actually a preamplifier. What that means is that it amplifies the circuit, um, you know, so that when the guitar signal comes in or the bass signal comes into the DI box, it's actually amplified when it sends off uh, the signal to the PA system or the recording system. Very important to note that. All right, so let's kind of understand how this works. Basically, if we look at this diagram up here, in this example, we've got a bass guitar. So the bass guitar signal goes into the DI box, from the DI into the amplifier. So this is your through connection, the in and the through. And it goes through what they call a buffer. So essentially, if you were to look at the electrical signal, it would go through a buffer, and that's kind of like the triangles, shows you what a buffer looks like in an electric circuit, over to the mixing console. So that's how a DI box works. It basically takes the signal in, through, and then back over to the PA system. And you can kind of see that over here with my wonderful drawing. All right, now where things get interesting is active DI boxes have what they call a limited range in which they work, and that's called the rail voltage. Um, a typical DI has a range of about three volts. Now back in the day when the world was using old Fender guitars, it was fine because they just had a passive pickup. But today you've got digital pianos, you've got active basses that have got all kinds of preamps, you've got acoustic guitars. They can put out anywhere from six to nine volts, lots and lots and lots of level. So um, the DI box today kind of needs to adjust to that world and that's kind of what the J48 is all about. Inside the J48, um, we've got a digital switching power supply, and you can kind of see it right here. I'm going to move into the camera a bit so you can see it. You've got a transformer, you've got a digital switching chip, and these are used to take the 48 volt phantom DC and raise that voltage so that internally we've got a lot more voltage to work with. And, and by raising the rail voltage, you really get better sound, less distortion, less phase distortion, less IMD, all those different types of distortion. That's really what makes the J48 so cool. Now, let's watch what happens. Let's just use a for instance. So if I've got a regular bass guitar and it puts out three volts, I've got a regular DI box, I'm good. But if I have an active bass or a digital piano, all of a sudden, I'm exceeding this rail voltage. And what happens is, of course, sound will go along to that. Let's say it's like six volts at the output. Well, invariably, you get what they call clipping. That's right, it clips off the signal. This is the problem. If you don't have enough rail voltage, you, you, you clip the signal, you distort or square wave the signal, and that sounds terrible to the ears. So the magic in the J48, of course, is raising the rail voltage so that we get up to nine volts. So what does that mean? Is that if you put out big signals like that, you've still got lots of headroom up here. So there's what you call your headroom, there's your active circuit, and there's the problem with older, less expensive DI boxes. They just don't have the range. Now, let's take a look at the features and how this thing works. So real simple, input, throughput, there you go. Your output's your XLR, phantom comes back this way. You'll notice a little LED here on the J48. This LED only goes on momentarily when you hit a low cut switch. The reason we don't leave that LED on is because we don't want the power to light up that LED to be taken away from the circuit because we want to maximize the efficiency of the circuit. We want every ounce of current available directed towards sound. Next, you've got uh, a couple simple features. You've got a pad. What the pad does is it reduces the level going into the DI box. So for extra hot keyboards or extra hot bass instruments, stuff like that, you might throw the pad on. Then, of course, you've got a merge function, which is popular in a lot of our DI boxes, that allows you to take a left and right signal and do a passive summing mix at the input. So you can take left and right out mono. On the other side here, I mentioned earlier, you've got a, um, a, a filter, and what this filter does, it's um, called a high pass filter or a low cut filter. It gets rid of the bottom end, um, bottom end mud or the low frequency um, extra bass that you don't really need. For example, with an acoustic guitar, hitting the switch, 
you'll eliminate a lot of the rumble that can cause feedback. You've also got a ground lift switch, which allows us to eliminate some ground loop problems. And how that occurs, of course, is that the signal going through the mixing console here actually goes to ground at one point. That goes to the ground that's connected to the amplifier and which in turn would cause a ground loop. By being able to lift the ground at the output of the J48, you can eliminate the hum and buzz caused by ground loops. Now we do this in kind of like a slick way because we don't actually lift it at the XLR pin because that would cut off phantom power. What we do instead is we actually lift the ground inside the power supply. So it's kind of a very slick way of doing things. Really um, very innovative. So you've got a ground lift that actually works inside the J48 that is not at the XLR so it doesn't cut off phantom power. Um, finally, uh, there is a polarity reverse, and that polarity reverse is used primarily with um, applications like an acoustic guitar to stop feedback. And how it works is that you might have a zone where you're standing on stage where you're getting a lot of feedback, and then if you just move over a little bit, the feedback goes away. That probably means that you're standing in what they call a mode, a room mode position or a null, where you've got um, a couple modes kind of amplifying each other at certain frequencies which cause feedback. Hitting that polarity reverse will solve the problem. Um, oftentimes, get rid of feedback. The other advantage, of course, is that you've got electrical issues where things don't line up. Reversing the phase can help too. So that's what that polarity switch is all about. Um, construction, I'm just going to touch on that very quickly. I-beam construction, that stops any torque on the PCB because the PCB is stuffed full of parts. Any kind of torquing on this fragile circuit board will potentially cause problems in the field. We don't want problems in the field because remember, you've got bands all over the world using these things. They don't want a failure of a DI box on stage. So that's kind of the idea of having a lot of protection. So this I-beam construction stops that problem. You'll notice also, you've got this bookend design. This closes in like this. And what it does is provides a protective zone around the switches and connectors. This protective zone is really the magic that keeps things from getting damaged, like being hit in cases or when they're being put away or taken out of boxes and stuff. Um, on the bottom, you've got a non-slip pad. This pad here is designed to put on an amplifier so it doesn't vibrate and move around. It also has the advantage that uh, you'll notice on the top of your amp, there's little bolts that stick through and these hold the amp and chassis together. By having this isolation pad, we not only um, stop the DI box from falling all over the place and vibrating off the amp, but it also gives us a mechanical shield that creates an electrical shield against those screws, which could potentially cause some problems for us. Um, everything's designed in the J48 to be functional, to be easy to use, straightforward. There's not a lot of extra features on it. It's really a simple box, very, very high quality, um, flat probably from 10 hertz to about 60 kilo. Hertz. It's, it's active, so it's got lots of reach. It sounds really wonderful, particularly the acoustic guitar, passive basses. You get all that sound. Really great little DI box. J48 from Radial.